Hello, welcome back. I'm Jace Lewis, and now I'm going to take you through the editing process of drums using Cubase 9. Now that I've, everything's triggered up um, with, uh, with my library kicks and library snares, um, I'm going to go in and start producing my, uh, my kit. So we'll start with a kick. So this is my real kick. So what I'd like to do first is see if there's any sounds in there that I don't really want. Um, so I'll go fishing for frequencies that I don't need. I quite like the bottom end of this kick, so uh, it's not, you know, not over woofing itself. And I think what I'll also do is go into my SSL, try a bit of 8K, which gives you that hammer, um, just gives you that precision. if we can get away with a little, little more 60 hertz. I'm happy with that. Now with the sample kick. Starting to sound like a tight bottom end kick drum, and that's really what we're wanting because you know um, it just helps the production. We don't want it too bass heavy because you know you want to make room for synths, especially with this type of music. You know, I got like sub synth and stuff that is always a, a careful, um, got to be careful rather to, to that the sub doesn't take up the kick and, and vice versa in frequency. So we'll get to that later. Uh, now for the snare. So the snare, I can hear, could do with a bit of 8K. I'm starting to pop it out. Try a bit of 6 as well. No, I was taking up too much.
As this is the tops now, really what we're looking for is for that impact, that real whack kind of effect. Um, instantly putting on a bit of 8K on, on, on the EQ gives you that bit of uh, distinction and, and, and conviction in the hit. Um, 3K just brings up a bit of the, bit of the body. Um, so we've boosted, we've boosted both um, by about 4 dB, 5 dB um, on, on both. Now what I'm going to go for is, uh, is my favorite little plug-in, which is the DBX160 uh, compressor. Um, and I'm going to compress the snare. Now, what I love about this plugin is very easy to use. Um, there's not too many things going on. So this is really going to help the um, conviction again on the snare by giving us, giving us a, bit, a little more, more front end on it. So now you can kind of hear that it's just tamed off the tail, but it's really brought up that impact more on the front end. So if I bypass it. Back in. So the snare is now starting to poke out. Um, there's a couple of flams there that needed to be sorted out with the snare and the sample. So just getting them right at the front of the transient, making sure that they are um, perfectly in time, um, just to give it that strength. Again, front of the transient, you can see where it just declines. That's the exact point of where we need to start our sample in sequence with our natural snare hit. Uh, next thing I want to do is to give a little, uh, little bit of reverb to our snare. Um, and so to do that, um, we need to create a group channel. And on this, I will be using my Sound Toys Echo Boy. And I'll go to my EQ on my real snare top and I will send that to the group that I have just created. on the sends, which is to the right hand side of the EQ. Um, 
Um, what I usually go for on this is reverb, sort of something like Cave Echo. And the beauty about sending it to a group is that on the mixer, I can creep in the noise. So what I often do is I put the mix up full on the echo by and I creep in on the back end of the send for the snare the reverb effect that I want. This is done so that you don't flatten the entire signal. I have this at the back end which is what you want. So you want the uh, the, the original signal of the snare right at the front end and then the reverb at the back end. So we'll just creep this in as, as slowly as we want till we're happy. That's pretty cool. I'll also do the same in my sample, send out to the group. And the beauty about Cubase is that you can adjust how much or little of that you want in its own mix within the send. Okay. So let's look at the hat. What's the next thing? Hat is a pretty straightforward instrument. First thing I do is I don't want any of the kick in there. So I get a low cut. So I can hardly hear any kick. And then what I'll do is I'll just go into my uh, channel strip again. I'll just get my SSL and fish for some frequencies, see what spits out nice. Give it almost a bit of a 9 to 10k boost just to give it a bit of sizzle. Another little trick that I like to, to do with the old hat is, uh, is to just go into a fine little plugin called Devil Lock, again by Sound Toys. And that basically just excites it a little bit. So if I have it on its maximum mix on the right hand side, I'll start with crunch. A bit of darkness there. And then I'll dial back the mix just to see how happy I am with the sound of that. So that's natural. And there you go, that excites the hats a little bit. Now, bearing in mind, the hat 
you want it. I set it to the perspective of the drummer. So my hi-hat is to my left. So it's important to pan it to the left. Um, I've got mine at about 62% over. Um, you can either go really hard, which would mean that the hi-hat would almost be behind me. Um, but uh, I like to have it almost sort of direct to my left. And, and I do that in my production as well. I'm, I, I always do the drums them, but from the perspective of the drummer. Um, and uh, panning is really, really important with, uh, with, with drums. So let's move on to the overheads. Now, the overheads, let's increase the size of these. So the first thing I do with the overheads is to check for whistles, some frequencies that I don't want in there. So I go to EQ, Studio, and finding my frequencies. So now that I've uh, fished out the frequencies I don't like, um, I'll go into compression. Again, my DBX160, just to give it a little more conviction at the front end. SSL again. Except this time I'll shelf it. And on my mixer. Alt, hold Alt and click on the mouse, and I can copy everything, those two set, those three settings rather, over to the other overhead. The final thing I want to do on this is to again open up my EQ and get the bottom end out. For that, I'm going to low cut. Usually around 400 hertz. Just really want to get rid of that kick. And again, Alt and click, copy that over. So the overheads now are sizzling um, and they're really helping the snare when that kicks in as well. Um, so all together. So the production of the drums are now starting to come together and really help. One thing I like to do in the mix is, as you'll see, my overhead left is 
panned hard left and overhead right is panned hard right. This gives you the entire stereo image of the kit and it's highly important. What I also like to do um, on the mix uh, is to pair my overheads and, and, uh, and my rooms. So to do that I select my room left, shift and click room right and link these channels and I'll name them overheads. This is so that I can creep them in on the mix. So if I cut them out. Here's my overheads. On this session, I've got my room um, done in a stereo. I usually do it in um, in mono, so it's left and right again, and I can adjust it. But on this one, I've gone for a, for just one stereo image, and uh, and again, just creep this in. So as you can hear on that room. There's a lot of, uh, lot of boom, a lot of kick. So we're just going to get rid of that. And adjust that. So again, same process. Let's go and find some frequencies that we don't want. And now we'll shelf it and get rid of the bottom end. Go into EQ. Give it a little more shimmer. So I've got my channel strip again, SSL. Find a frequency you really like. Around 10k, this kind of makes it feel really hi fi and you know it really does give it that sizzle. And let's check that out in the mix by creeping that in. You'll really hear the room, it'll really help with the natural reverb of the snare. So um, I love to use a lot of room and a lot of ambience in my, uh, in my drum mix. Now on this, uh, on this take, I've also got a microphone right in the front of the drum kit. Um, and this is what I call my, mo my room mono. Uh, this is right in front of the kit. Um, and this is a very simple, simple effect where, um, again, We'll just find the frequencies we don't like. And 
then what I like to do is high shelf and low shelf. Which gives us this almost underwater effect. A lot of, um, some, well, uh, some producers I know don't really use that trick, but I've always seen it as like the, the, the sound is being projected forward from a drum kit, so I've always wanted to capture that, and that's where that room mono really played into effect. It seemed to open up the, the drums, it gave it more headroom again and, and more conviction on the snare, which is something I was always fighting for in production. Um, and yeah, this, uh, this really does help. On this track, I don't really have uh, any toms, but what I like to do is uh, is bus um, my toms uh, to a, to a bus mix, and uh, on that I throw a, a compressor, my DBX160, and that just really again brings the conviction out um, for for the for the toms, and then I also add another effect chain um, again, which is a group, and that again uh, helps us with the uh, with the reverb. So I throw my cave echo on that with Echo Boy. And again, just creep in the mix, and that starts to poke the toms out even more so. Um, really, really helps the mix again. Um, but uh, again, on this, uh, on this track, there is no toms, so, um, so we haven't got that for this. So now that the drums are done, um, we've got them to a state uh, of them being audible, and they're, they're poking out everything, starting to fit in place. Um, now we look at the synths. Um, now, sometimes with synths and drums, there's quite a, um, a difficulty with frequencies because some synths can be quite high in frequency and they can clash with things like the cymbals, hi-hats. And, um, and we're pretty much going to find a way that we can get the synths to sit within the pocket and outside and, uh, and group some effects and get them to, to wrap around you. The first synth uh, that we're going to address is the synth that goes into the chorus on Shields. Um, it's a gated synth I've got. So the first thing, first thing I want to look at is its panning. So if I turn it to stereo. I'm going to keep that synth wide, just finding out where it sits best. Um, I've got a bass synth that supports that right underneath, and I'm going to probably have that more central because it's the bottom end. So with that synth, I'm going to create a group channel. And this group channel again will enable me to um, bring creep in some effects like reverb and delay, and that will really throw the synth, and it'll start to engulf the listener. So if I get that group channel up, synth delay. Sound toys echo by up once again. Mix. Okay, so I've got echo by. What I want to do now is assign this to my synth delay group.
So you can hear that's dry. And this is with my echo. So that will really help carrying it on and, and wrapping it around the listener. Um, basically, um, I, I do a lot of ambient uh, stereo imagery with, uh, with, with my synths just to help. Um, so now I've got that group channel up. What I'll do is go into EQ. So I'll mute. I'll mute my uh, effect. Let's go in there and see what this uh, synth has got. So let's find some frequencies that we don't like. bass synth in this as well, I think what I'll do is just low shelf the bottom end and make this sizzle more on top. Still some frequencies there I don't like. now sitting nicely on top. This is my synth, my bottom end synth. This is my bottom end synth that I really want to um, get up the center. So if I turn that to uh, a stereo pan combined, you can see um, what I'm going to do is just narrow this right down I think that will do just fine. So by having that up the center and having my other synths really wide, you can start to hear a bit of an ambient going on. The, the, bottom end synth is right up the center, smashing your teeth, and then you've got these other synths that are just wrapping around your head. So when you're wearing headphones, you'll really be able to, to hear that really well. synth there, really want that to have a nice bit of reverb, so again go to a 
go to your group channel. You'll notice that I'm always changing these to yellow. It's just so that they stick out on the, on the mix for me. So I can see. I'm going to call that synth verb. Send that to the synth verb. So on this, I'm going to go again for, for my echo by, by sound toys. And I'll go to reverb cave echo. So we got a pretty big cave echo on this. It'll really, really sit it on top and glisten. Starting to sound quite big, starting to sound pretty, uh, quite a production sound to it. And uh, there you go, that's how you do synths, to sit them in with drums, panning, very, very important. Uh, making sure you move things out of the way um, and, uh, and EQing as well. Okay, so that's all we have time for. Thanks very much for joining me using Cubase on editing my track Shields, coming out of my album Million, which is coming out in October. Hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you again very soon.